If it's simply relative density, which is my belief as of today, then why do things accelerate down and not up? Please cover this tomorrow. I will try to listen in. Well, you know, Anthony, that's a fine question. What does determine down with relative density? Okay, now, we, as we recall, force equals mass times acceleration. And we know that density equals mass divided by volume, not velocity, volume. Now, we have the mass. Where's the acceleration to make this a force? Now, Anthony, are you telling me that the force of relative density equals mass times one over volume? Is this the acceleration, one over volume? How many meters per second is that? Now, we do have a force that's related indirectly to density, and that's the force of buoyancy. And the force of buoyancy equals the density of a fluid times the volume of a fluid times gravity. Gravity, as you know, is an acceleration, and this is a mass. So that makes that a force. Now, I can't help but think that you're confusing density, which is not a force, with buoyancy, which is a force, because there's an acceleration, the acceleration of gravity. But let's let you go ahead and tell your story, and then we'll have a look at it. So, cue up the music, and let's get it going. The vector is created by the medium and the egg, the, the egg itself, and it's the, it's the relative densities of both. Now, I've highlighted Nora's comment, and I'm going to state on the record again that, in my opinion, Nora is disinfo on this topic because Nora is not just disagreeing with me. She's literally going against scientific method. Well, hold your horses there for a second, Anthony. Are you sure that you even understand the scientific principle involved here? Let's just go over it real quick. Now let's take a moment and go over Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle basically says this. If you look at the, the weight of an object and it displaces a volume of fluid if you submerge it, if you weigh it on dry air, say this object weighs 10 kilograms, if you weigh it out in the air, it's going to weigh 10 kilograms. Now, and I'm using the common definition of weight here. It's actually 980 newtons, but we're going to just kind of take the little, we're going to convert it out of gravity for a minute. Just leave it at kilograms because everybody's familiar with that. Now, if you take that 10 kilogram object and you submerge it in water and it replaces two kilograms of water, how much will it weigh? Well, 10 minus the, the two kilograms of the water that it displaces. So if you put that on a scale underwater, it will weigh eight kilograms. Okay. Now one other principle that I want to go over. As you recall, force equals mass times acceleration. Archimedes' principle is giving us some idea of this mass. This is where the relative density comes into play. However, relative density is not a force because it's just involving the mass. It doesn't have an acceleration. You have to add an acceleration to it, and that acceleration's right here, and it's gravity. Now, the force of gravity, or the direction of gravity, say, is down. That's going to be positive. That's going to be negative. Now, if this mass is a positive number, it's going to move that way. If the mass, on the other hand, is a negative number, it's going to go that way. Now let's see how this applies to Anthony Riley's experiment with the eggs. Now we have a glass here that has some water in it and we have an egg floating in it. Now that egg is of a volume that displaces 500 grams of water. Now the way Archimedes principle works is you take the mass of the object minus the mass of the fluid, 
it displaces, and you come up with an answer. So, if our egg weighs 250 grams, and it displaces 500 grams of water, we are at a negative 250. Now, a negative times the force of gravity means that the vector of gravity, which is this way, this is the positive direction of gravity, and that's the negative direction of gravity. So if this number is negative, the egg will move that way. It will float. Now, if on the other hand, we had a really heavy egg, and instead of weighing 250 grams, it weighed 750 and displaced 500 grams of water, we subtract one from the other, we get a positive 250 gram mass here. That times gravity will give us a positive number and the egg will sink. Now, what happens if we make the fluid more dense? Okay, so instead of displacing 500 grams of fluid, Let's go ahead and say that we, because we added salt to it, now that fluid weighs 750 grams. Well, 750 minus 750 is zero. That egg will just sit there. But if the egg was a 500 gram egg, guess what's going to happen? We're going to have negative 250. And we're going to float that egg. And that's exactly what happened in Anthony Riley's experiment. Um, so Nora says, here's Sleeping Warrior talking about vectors when he doesn't believe in up and down. Do I sense a contradiction? No, th there's no contradiction because the bit in blue specifically states that it's relative, especially as determining the position of one point in space relative to another. So to address Nora's point, no, there's no contradiction because I'm specifically dealing with relativity. Okay, it's relative density, relative to each other. So there's no contradiction there, Nora. Well, Anthony, here's the part that you just don't seem to understand. What happens if you have density compared to another density, like in our Archimedes principle, but there's no acceleration acting on it? It's a mass times zero equals the force. What is anything times zero? Zero. There's no force. That's why density is not a force. Second point, uh, whilst having the definition of force on screen, Nora puts this comment. Riley thinks that because he, Riley thinks this because he thinks we cannot observe the effect of an unknown force. So far, we cannot manipulate. He equates cause with that which one manipulates. Fallacy of false cause. Okay, well, let's think about this for a moment. Now, we know that force equals mass times acceleration and that density does not have an acceleration, so it's not a force. You are maintaining that despite the fact that you have the definition of force on the screen in front of you, that density is still a force, even though you can see right in front of you on your screen that it's not. So what you're doing is you are attributing a cause to a coincidence. You increase the density of the water and your egg floated, all right? That has to do with the principle of buoyancy, which involves gravity, which provides the acceleration. However, you are insistent that it just has to do with the density. Now, the fact that you increase the density and the egg rose was a coincidence. It was not causation. Causation was the change in buoyancy under the influence of the acceleration of gravity. That's the true cause. You refuse to admit it because you will not accept little g in the equation. So you have to have an equation that does not involve little g, and as a result, you're making logical leaps, and you are also committing the logical fallacy of false cause. Well, if we manipulate it according to scientific method, if we manipulate your independent variable to prove the cause of an effect. With the egg, we know that when that egg is in a state of neutral buoyancy... Stop right there, Anthony. What did you just say? Neutral buoyancy. That's not density. Buoyancy 
involves gravity. Listen again. We know that when that egg is in a state of neutral buoyancy, there you said it again, buoyancy. Buoyancy involves the acceleration of gravity. It is a force. Density does not have an acceleration on it. It is not a force. You are talking about buoyancy and admitting gravity. Thank you. If there is a force there, it's the net force of zero. But my assertion is that there's no force there at all, and it's just the equality between the density uh, of the egg equal to the density of the medium it's in. Okay, let me see if I can clear this up a little bit more for you. It is not the density of the egg versus the density of the medium it is in. It is the mass of the egg relative to the mass of the fluid occupying the same volume as the egg. If those two masses are the same, it is zero times the acceleration of gravity, and the buoyant force is zero. If those masses are different, the egg will go up or the egg will go down. That's buoyant. But what Nora says is, he equates cause with that which one manipulates. Well, your independent variable is the variable that is manipulated by the researcher in an experiment. Now, Anthony, you may want to review my video on the independent variable because you have it wrong. Okay, now here's a couple of problems that you're running into. The independent variable is the one that is changed independent of the other variables. It doesn't say who changes it, it just says that it changes, and then you measure the effect on a dependent variable. Now, there are two types of independent variable. There is the independent variable that directly causes a change in the dependent variable. And then there's something called an attribute independent variable. And that is something that sets a process up or there's an intermediate process that it triggers that causes an effect on the dependent variable. Now specifically, let's give you an example of that. I press on the gas pedal on my car. That puts more gas in the engine. The engine speeds up and I go faster down the road. My independent variable is the pressure on the accelerator. My dependent variable is the speed on the highway. There's an intermediate step. The pressure on the accelerator is an attribute variable. Okay? Now, you can test this by turning off the engine. You can test buoyancy by turning off gravity. And the way that you would do that is either in the vomit comet where you drop it or you take it up to the ISS and microgravity and see if the same thing happened with the egg. I think you'll find that it won't because gravity is required for this to happen. So when she says he equates cause with, which, with that which one manipulates, unfortunately, Nora, it complies with scientific method and is the, is the cause of the effect. You know, Anthony, this is the difference between wearing a white coat and earning a white coat. Time, age, and gender, by definition, are independent variables. We cannot physically manipulate any of them, yet they are still independent variables. Time does not cause my fingernails to grow. I can use time as an independent variable and measure the length of my fingernails, but there's something else that actually causes them to grow. You, you just get a change over the independent variable of time. Now, being a good guy like I am, if you would like to contact me, I will teach you how to conduct this egg experiment properly so that you can get some meaningful results from it. It's not that difficult to do. It's a very simple thing. I'll give you a couple of hints. First, you measure the volume of the egg and then you weigh the egg to find out how much mass is in it, okay? Then you figure out how much the mass of the water that egg replaces would be. And then you add just enough salt to get that specific density using a hydrometer, okay? Then you can literally float the egg in there and then you just take a few pinches of salt, increase that salinity a little bit, and you'll float the egg. Instead of just dumping some in and saying, oh look, the egg floated. Okay, what was the force of buoyancy? How much salt was required to float that egg? What was the volume of water? What was the volume of the egg? What was the mass of the egg? What was the density of the egg? You see, 
You can't take all these shortcuts, Anthony, and get meaningful results. What you did was a power trick, something that you read in a book or saw in a YouTube video, and you did it without understanding it. And you thought because you wore glasses and a white coat that made you scientific. Well, sir, it does not. So on the one hand, if you're going to claim that there's a force there, then we're, you're going to have to demonstrate that force by wiggling it. That's the reason why we have the requirement. So Anthony, right here you demonstrate that you simply don't understand this experiment what you did. You did wiggle the force. You wiggled the force of buoyancy by changing the density of the fluid that that egg was submerged in. Because you changed the density of the fluid but held the volume same, you increased the buoyant force, which involves gravity. Now, that's why the egg floated. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that the egg is here and the salt water is over here and somehow their densities interact. It has to do with how much salt water that egg displaces and that gives you a force of buoyancy. So, I'm going to go ahead and close there. Thank you guys very much for stopping by and watching this. Make sure you kind of reach down there and hit that little like and subscribe button. So from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out. We'll see you again soon. Take care. This rabbit hole's too deep for me.